This learning block is the first of two about design patterns with JSF. We'll be looking today at uh, three patterns, front controller, facade and command, and we'll see how to uh, use those in a, a JSF application. But we'll start off with an introduction to design patterns. The concepts that you'll need for this learning block will come from uh, learning block one, manage beans, MVC from learning block three, the life cycle from, well, since day one, and a little bit about the USDP from last learning block. The thing about design patterns is that they describe general solutions to general problems. There are some kinds of problems that occur in all kinds of settings, not just computing. You might want to do some sorting. You might want to sort Lego blocks, or you might want to sort pencils. You might also want to do some sorting of data, maybe in a, a drawer full of paper. And there are all kinds of different algorithms that you could use for sorting. And those same algorithms can be used in computing. And so very often these design patterns, although we're going to apply them in terms of our computer programs, could very well describe solutions to problems that occur elsewhere. Because they are a generalized solution, it means that we are going to need to adapt them, customize them to our specific applications. Because it's a general description of a problem, there will be several features that we'll need to understand. First of all, what's the name? It's quite important to have this name because it gives us a vocabulary to use as we become more familiar with these design patterns. We also find a description of the problem that the pattern is addressing and then the solution. Remember that solution is generalized and so we will very often need to adapt it to fit our specific application's needs. And there'll also be a description about the consequences of using that solution. Why use them? They're going to cause a bit of a headache in as much as you will find that there will be some kind of class explosion taking place within your applications. All of a sudden there will be a lot more classes than you were originally planning on. But why do it? Well, first of all, these patterns are not just good ideas. They are tried and tested good ideas that have been used in industry maybe for decades. With some of the patterns, we'll find that there are alternatives provided. So there isn't necessarily just one way of solving a problem. We'll also find that our system documentation and maintenance is easier. If you've got a facade pattern and in your documentation you say, oh, I've got a facade pattern. Whoever is using it immediately knows what to look out for in the design, what to look out for in the code. And that will make their navigation around your system when it comes to doing maintenance or documentation much easier. And then there's this idea of vocabulary, a lexicon. If you have a common understanding of these design patterns in your development team, you can talk to each other in terms of the names of these patterns. You could say, oh, I think we should use a facade for this subsystem, and your whole team will know what you mean. You don't have to go into great detail about it. It's this idea of abstraction again, where, for example, we might talk about a bike. You immediately know what I mean by bike. I don't have to tell you that it's two wheels and a saddle and handlebars and brakes and pedals and chain and so on. I can just use the one word and that immediately conveys the idea to you. And it's the same with these design patterns. We can use the names of the patterns to convey a lot of information immediately. We'll find design patterns all over the place in computing, especially in frameworks. The Java Swing API, for example, makes use of design patterns everywhere. Observe a pattern, composite pattern, iterate a pattern. And when you start looking for them, as you become more familiar with these design patterns, you'll start to see them all over the place. In JSF, web applications, which is a subset of Java Enterprise Edition, will find design patterns are in use. I'll point out a couple to you in a, in a while. The other thing about frameworks, though, is that it can impose patterns upon you. You might not have intended to use a particular pattern, but it's imposed on you. The front controller is one example of that. So let's talk about this front controller design pattern. The general concept is that the front controller will act as a centralized entry point that controls and manages requests. And you'll find this approach with all of these patterns. There will be some kind of intent. That's the word that t tends to be associated with it. It's a description of its purpose. Why do we need this pattern? That's the intent. And with this, it's because we want to have a centralized entry point 
that controls and manages requests. So clients of the system will know that they just go to one place to gain access to the system, the front controller. Front because it sits right at the front of the application. That's the point of contact for all clients. They'll send their requests to that front controller and because it's a controller, think about MVC, model view controller, it's going to coordinate the response to the request that has just come in. Now the JSF control servlet is an implementation of the front controller pattern. So there's an example of a framework imposing a pattern on us. We've got no control over that controller. We just provide all the components that sit behind that front controller that are then, because of its life cycle, going to be activated at appropriate times. In the front controller design pattern, we've got five participants. We have the clients. In this case, it's whoever has submitted the HTTP request. That gets sent to the front controller, which is, in this case, the control servlet in the JSF environment. There will also be a dispatcher. Now, from our point of view, as users of the JSF framework, we'll think of that as being the control servlet. It might actually be a different class, but we don't have to worry about that. The control servlet then will dispatch requests to other components. There'll also need to be a view, which in our case will be a JSF facelet, and some helpers. These helpers just smooth the way for the response to be generated for that particular request. Typical things will be managed beans. And then any of the POJOs that we write for our purposes to to separate concerns and make our applications more readable, more maintainable and generally better.